In this tutorial, we're going to learn about both of verbs. In this tutorial, you're going to learn about what are modal verbs, how they are used, their grammar rules, and some examples as well. First, let's first let's define modal verbs. Modal verbs are used to express certain hypothetical conditions such as advice, capability, or request. They are used alongside a main verb to change its meaning slightly. Because they're auxiliary verbs, they can't necessarily be used on their own. Consider the difference between these two examples. For instance, I swim every Tuesday. I can swim every Tuesday. The first example is a simple factual statement. The speaker participates in a swimming activity every week on Tuesdays. The second example uses the modal verb can. Notice how the meaning changes slightly. The speaker does not swim every Tuesday. Instead, he's saying how he's capable of swimming every Tuesday because he needed to. It's hypothetical. Mod model verbs are quite common in English, and you've probably seen them hundreds of times without actually knowing their name. But for this tutorial, here are the model verbs we'll be, we'll be tackling and discussing. Can, may, might, could, should, would, will, must, and wish. So, luckily, using modal verbs in a sentence is pretty simple. For basic sentences, the simple present tense, just remember these rules. Modal verbs always come directly before the main verb, except for questions. With modal verbs, use the infinitive form of the main verb without two. So if you want to brag about your ability to eat an entire pizza, you take the infinitive form of eat without two, which is simply eat and add the modal verb can in front of it. The rest of the sentence continues as normal. I can eat an entire pizza. For questions, you still use the infinitive form of the main verb, but the order is a little different. Modal verb plus subject plus main verb. So let's rephrase the example above as a question. Can you eat an entire pizza? Because modal verbs largely deal with general situations or hypotheticals that haven't actually happened, most of them are in present tenses. However, some of them can be used in different verb tenses. So we'll talk a little about how to construct them later. Now let's discuss the rules of modal verb when it comes to their forms in the three tenses, past, present, and future. First, let's talk about how to use modal verbs in present tenses. So since we already covered the simple present, we can also use modal verbs in the present continuous and present perfect continuous tenses. First, let's talk about modal verbs in present continuous. After the modal verb, use the word be followed by the ing form of the main verb. Modal verb plus be plus verb in ing form. For example, I should be going. Second, let's talk about modal verbs in present perfect continuous. You can add a modal verb before a verb in a present perfect continuous tense without changing much. However, when using a modal verb, you must always use have, never had, never had, even if the subject is third person. Modal verb, have been, and verb in ing form. She, she must have been sleeping, for example. Now let's discuss modal verbs in past tenses and present perfect. Putting a modal verb in the simple past, past continuous, and present perfect tense is a little trickier. For starters, two modal verbs in particular have a simple past tense, can and will. If you want to use either one of these tenses, you must first conjugate them into their past tense form. For example, can would be could and will will be would. All the others remain the same, although some can be used in the, in the past at all. Modal verbs often deal with hypotheticals, but if an action already happened in the past, it can't be hypothetical. These are mostly for speculating about the past, such as wondering what if. None of the modal verbs can be used in the past perfect or past perfect continuous. Now let's talk about modal verbs in simple past. Of the main modal verbs listed at the top, only can and will can be used in the simple past. 
Had to and need to can also be used as long as they're conjugating accordingly as had to and needed to. Other modal verbs use the present perfect to discuss events in the past. Can and will use their present tense form plus the infinitive form of the verb without to, just like in the present. Could or would plus verb in infinitive. For example, I could do a handstand when I was a kid. Another example is, during some seasons in college, I would not sleep much. Next, let's talk about modal verbs in past continuous. Again, only can and will can be used in the past continuous if it, it's formed just like the present continuous, except with the past form of the modal verb. So it would be could or would plus be plus verb in ing form. For example, I could be working right now. Mo now let's talk about modal verbs in present perfect. Instead of using the infinitive form of the main verb, just use the present perfect form, which is have plus the past participle. As before, you, you must always use, use have, even if the subject is third person. If you use using can, be sure to use its past tense form of could. So the formula would be modal verb plus have plus past participle. For example, I might have gone to the party, but I forgot. Now let's discuss modal verbs in future tenses. The truth is that most of the future tenses already use modal verbs because they use will. If you wanna use different modal verb, such as can or should, you can use it normally with the infinitive form of the verb and without will. For example, I can hang out tomorrow. Should I major in law next year? Now let's finally move on to the different types of modal verbs. The first one I wanna talk about is can. Can is the modal verb that refers to a possibility, ability, or capacity. Can refers to a general truth or something that has a strong possibility. For example, I can ride a horse. We can stay with a my brother when we are in Paris. She cannot stay out long after 10 p.m. Now let's discuss the forms of the modal verb can. First, let's talk about the affirmative form of can. Can comes first, first in the verb phrase after the subject and before another verb. For example, we can take the train to Birmingham. Remember that can is never used with another modal verb. For example, you don't say he can might not hear, he can might hear the music or he might can hear the music. You say he can hear the music from this room sometimes. Now let's go to the negative form of can. The negative form of can is can't. We don't use don't, doesn't, did, and didn't with can. We don't say, I don't can believe you said that. Instead, we say, I can't believe you said that. Also, we can use the full form cannot in formal context or when we want to emphasize something. For example, I cannot understand why she believes, why she behaves that way. Now, let's go to the question form of can. Just a little warning. The subject and, the, and can change position to form questions. We don't use do, does, or did. For example, we don't, you, we don't say, does this can really be true? Instead, we say, can this really be true? Another example is, can you ask for another day of work? So here, so now let's discuss the different usages of the model verb can. First, often use can for or get, to give permission. For example, can I take Daisy for a walk? Students can use calculators during the exam. We use can to forbid. For example, you can't park there. You can't just take the work off. You have to have permission in advance. Next is we use can to denote ability. We often use can to talk about ability to do something in the present or future. For example, I can't sing one song in Polish. Can you sleep on your back? We can go swimming after school if you like. Now, we often use can with verbs of perception such as 
hear, smell, taste, and mental processes verbs such as guess, imagine, picture, understand, and follow. For example, I can hear you. I can see you're coming down the road now. Can you smell something burning? I guess why you're angry. I can guess why you're angry. We can follow these instructions for installing this new DVD. Next, can is used to denote general truths. We can use we can use can to talk about things which we think are usually but not always true. For example, reducing cholesterol through diet can be difficult. Fireworks can frighten pets. Swans can be very vicious. Now let's use now let's use the model verb can in the three tenses: the present, the past, and the future. First, let's talk. Let's use can in present tense. I can speak Chinese. Now, its negative counterpart would be I can't speak Chinese. Now, let's use can in past tense. Now, if you now if you use can in, in past tense, then it would shift to could. For example, I could speak Chinese when I was a kid. Now, its negative counterpart would be I couldn't speak Swahili. Now let's use, now let's move on to the, the future tense of can. Now, if you're using can as future tense, always shift it to be able to. For example, I will be able to speak Chinese by the time I finish my course. Now, its negative counterpart would be, I won't be able to speak Swahili. Now let's move on to the second model verb, which is could. Like can, could can be used as, as to denote possibility as well, but the connotation is slightly different. Could, on the other hand, refers to something with a weak possibility or something that might necessarily, but not necessarily a general truth. For example, extreme rain could cause the river to flood the city. Nancy could ski like a pro by the age of 11. You could see a movie or go to dinner tonight. Now, let's go to the forms of could. First, I want to talk about the formative form of could. Could comes first in the verb phrase, after the subject, and before another verb. For example, we could have lunch early. Remember that could cannot be used with another modal verb. For example, we don't say we could might drive to friends or we might could drive to friends. Instead, we say we could drive to friends. Now, the negative form of could is couldn't. We don't use don't, doesn't, or didn't with could. For example, we can't say he didn't, he didn't could lift that. Instead, we say he couldn't lift that. It's too heavy. Now, we can use the full form could not in formal context or we want, when we want to emphasize something. Now, let's go to the question form of could. The subject and could change precision to form questions. We don't use do or does or did. For example, we don't say, do I could pay by credit card? Instead, we say, could I pay by credit card? So also, we, could, we use could and couldn't in question text. For example, I could come back tomorrow, couldn't I? Now let's go to the uses of the model verb could. Now, first of all, could could be used to denote possibility as much as can did because they're just closely related, related, related. We often use could to express possibility in the present and future. Now let's compare two sentences together. It's blue. I am certain that it is blue, it's a fact. But when I say it could be blue, I'm not certain that it is blue. Another example is, the storm will get worse. I'm certain that the storm will get worse. But when I say the storm could get worse, I'm not certain that the storm could get worse. Now, now could, could also be used to denote suggestions. We often use it to make suggestions like, Will's party is fancy dress, it's Halloween. All right, I could go as Julius Caesar. Again, how many times have you done that? Now, another example is, I've got to be in the meeting at 10, and but the train doesn't get until 
could you get an earlier train? Next, we use could to denote permission or to ask for permission. Could is more formal and more polite than can. For example, could I ask you a personal question? But just a warning, we don't use could to give or refuse permission. We use can. For example, could I leave early today? Yes, you can or no, you can't. Now we also use could to denote past achievement. When actual past achievements are mentioned, we usually we usually use was or were able to or managed to, but not could in affirmative causes. This is because they are facts rather than possibilities. For example, we don't say I could buy a wonderful bag to match my shoes. Instead, we say I was able to or managed to buy a wonderful bag to match my shoes. Another is we don't say we hired a car and we could drive 1,000 miles per hour. We instead we said we hired a car and we were able to or managed to drive 1,000 miles per hour. Now, we also use could to denote ability. For example, when I was young, I could easily touch my knees. Now let's talk about could denoting possibility. We use could plus ed form of the verb to talk about possibility in the past. For example, I could have been a lawyer. They could have been, they could have taken a taxi home instead of walking and getting wet. Janet couldn't have done any better. Now we also use could for guessing and predicting. Couldn't is the negative of must. When we want to guess or predict something, we could we use couldn't as the negative form of must. We use couldn't have plus ed form as the negative form of must have plus ed. Couldn't and couldn't have plus ed form express strong possibility. For example, she must have made a mistake. It couldn't be true. A firework couldn't have done all that damage. Now we also use could to denote the five senses. We use could to refer to single events that happened in the past with verbs of the senses such as smell, taste, hear, touch, etc. And mental processes such as thinking, believing, remembering, understanding, etc. For example, the food was terrible. I could taste nothing but salt. We knew they were in there. We could hear the voices inside. He came and spoke to me, but I couldn't remember his name. Now, could, could, also, could is also often used to denote criticism and express, if approved, express disapproval. This, this is often done by, by using could have plus ed form. For example, you could have called to say you would be late. You could have tidied up your room. Now, could could also be used to express regret. We use could, could have plus ed form to talk about things that did not happen and sometimes to express regret. For example, he could have been a doctor. I could have been famous. Now let's use the mother verb could in the three, the three tenses. First, let's use could in the present tense. For example, for, so for present tense, our example is, John could be the one who stole the money. Now, our negative counterpart for that is that Mary couldn't be the one who stole the money. Now, when we use, now let's use could in past tense. John could have been the one who stole the money. Now, its negative counterpart would be, Mary couldn't have been the one who stole the money. Now, let's use could in future tense. John could go to jail for stealing the money. Now, its negative counterpart would be, Mary couldn't possibly go to jail for the crime. Now, let's tackle the verb shall. Shall is a modal verb used to indicate future action. It is most commonly used in sentences with I or we and is often found in suggestions such as shall we go. Shall is also frequently used in promises or voluntary actions. In formal English, the use of shall to describe future events often expresses inevitability or predestination. Shall is much more commonly heard in British, British English than in American English. 
Americans prefer to use other forms, although they do sometimes use shall in suggestions or formalized language. Examples are, shall I help you? I shall never forget where I came from. He shall become our next king. Now let's talk about the affirmative form of shall. Shall comes in the shall comes first in the verb phrase after the subject and before the and before the other verb. We use we, we mostly use it with I and I and we. For example, I shall post it to you tomorrow. Shall cannot be used with another modal verb. For example, we don't say I shall must be or I must shall be. Instead, we say I shall have to be at the airport by 5 p.m. Shall can be followed by have to, need to, and be able to. For example, we shall have to tell him what happened. The good news is I shall be able to attend your meeting next week. Now the negative form of shall is shan't. We don't use don't, doesn't, and didn't with shall. For example, I shall be home tomorrow night. We shan't know the result of the test till Tuesday. Now we can use the for full form shall not in formal context or when we want to emphasize something. For example, the management shall not be responsible for the damage in personal property. And also take note that we don't often use the negative form. Now, it, when it comes to the question form, the subject and shall change position to form questions. But just a little warning, we don't use do, does, or did. The question form with I and we is the most common use of shall. For example, do we don't say, do I shall come round to the office? Instead, we say, shall I come round to the office? Now, we, shall use, we use shall in question tags. For example, I'll phone you later, shall I? Now, let's go to the uses of shall. We, have, we often use shall and I to make offers and suggestions and to ask for advice. For example, example of using shall as an indicator of offer is, shall I carry your bag? Now, an example of using shall as an indicator of suggestion is, shall I call you on Thursday? And another example of shall as an indicator of seeking advice is, what shall we do with this? Now, we also use shall instead of will with I and we, in rather formal context to make, to make predictions and to talk about intentions and decisions. It is much less common than will. For example, let's, com let's compare. We shall remember this day forever. This is a more formal use of shall. Now, we will remember this day forever. It's a less formal use of shall. Now let's use shall in present, past, and future tense. First, let's use shall in present tense. Can he shall serve as an example? Now, his negative counterpart will be Tyler should not serve as an example. Next, let's use shall in past tense. Can he should have served as an example? Now, his negative counterpart would be Tyler shouldn't have served as an example. Now, let's use shall in future form. Can he shall be awarded for serving as an example? Its negative counterpart would be Tyler shall not be shall not already be awarded for serving as an example. Now let's now let's move on to the next modal verb, which is should. Should is a modal verb most commonly used to make recommendations or to give advice. It can also be used to express obligation as well as expectation. For example, when you go to Berlin, you should visit the palaces in Potsdam. You should focus more on your family and less on work. You should really be in the office by 7 a.m. Now let's discuss the forms of should. First is the affirmative form of should. Should comes first in the verb phrase after a subject and before another verb. For example, I should go home now. Also, should cannot be used with another modal verb. We can't say it should may be sunny or it may should be sunny. Instead, we use, it should probably be sunny at that time of year. Now, the negative form of should is shouldn't. We don't use don't, doesn't, that can't, we should. For example, 
There shouldn't be many people at the beach today. We use the full form should not in formal context and we want, when we want to emphasize something. For example, we should not forget those who have given their lives in the defense of freedom. Now, when it comes to the question form, the subject and should change position to form questions. But a little warning, we don't use do, does, or did. We don't say, do I, should I, do I, should I turn on the air conditioning? Instead, we say, we don't, instead we say, shouldn't you, should I turn on the air conditioning? Another example is, shouldn't you be studying now? So we use should and shouldn't in question text. For example, I shouldn't have told her that, should I? Also, they should be getting back on Sunday, shouldn't they? Now let's go to the uses of should. Now we use should most commonly to talk about what is the most ideal or best thing to do in a situation. For example, there should be more public hospitals. They should reduce the price of petrol. It's so expensive. There should be four more cancel, candles on the cake. We use should have plus the ED form to talk about things that were ideal in the past, but which didn't happen. It can, it can also re express regret. For example, everyone knows that it is a busy restaurant. They should have made a reservation. I should have studied harder when I was young. I wish I had gone to college. Next are advice and suggestions. We often use should to give advice and make suggestions. For example, you should tell him what you think. Also, we should leave it until tomorrow. It's too late now. Now, we also use should to talk about what is very likely to happen. For example, shall we start? Looks delayed and he said he should be here in 10 minutes. There should be a very big crowd at the party. Mary has got a lot of friends. Next, we often say you shouldn't when you think someone or when someone gives us a gift. For example, I got you something from Texas, a cowboy hat. Oh, Ken, you shouldn't have. Next, we sometimes you should to express surprise or regret about something that happened. For example, I'm amazed that he have, should have done something so stupid. I'm sorry that he should be upset by what I said. Now let's use now let's use should in the three tenses. First, let's use should in the present form. People with high cholesterol should eat low-fat foods. Now its negative counterpart would be Sarah shouldn't smoke so much, it's not good for her health. Next, let's use should in past form. Frank should have eaten low-fat foods. That might have prevented his heart attack. Now, its negative counterpart would be, Cyrus shouldn't have smoked so much. That's what caused her health problems. Now, let's see should in future tense. You should really start eating better. Now, its negative counterpart would be, Cyrus shouldn't smoke when she visits Martha next week. Martha hates when people smoke in her house. Now, let's move on. Now, let's move on to the next model verb, which is will. Will is a model verb which promises authoritarian actions that take place in the future. Will can also be used to make predictions about the future. For example, I promise that I will write to you every single day. I will make dinner tonight. He thinks that it will rain tomorrow. Now, let's go to the forms of will. First is the affirmative form of will. Will comes first in the verb phrase in a sentence, after the subject and before another verb. It is often contracted to apostrophe LL in informal situations. For example, the next Olympic Games will be in London. I'll give you a call at about six o'clock. Remember that will cannot be used with another modal verb. For example, we don't say you will, you will must sign a contract or you must will sign a contract. Instead, we say, you will be obligated to sign a contract before starting the investment. Will can be followed by have to or be able to. For example, you'll have to let me know when it arrives. 
She will be able to live near her parents if she gets the job. Now, the negative form of will is won't. We don't use don't, doesn't, didn't with will. We don't say they don't will tell us very much about it until January. Instead, we say they won't tell us very much about it until January. We use the full form will not in formal context or we want to emphasize something. For example, I carry her, but I will not push a pram. Now, now, in terms of the question form of will, the subject and will change position to form questions. We don't use do, does, did. For example, will you be home earlier tomorrow? Will I be able to take this brochure home with me? Will the number in the will the number be in the phone book? But we don't say does the number will be in the phone book. Now we can use will and won't in question tags. You won't, for example, you won't forget to take the cake out of the oven, will you? It'll quick. It'll take quite a long time to get there, won't it? Now let's go to the uses of will. So first of all, one of the main uses of will is to refer to the things in the future that we think are very certain. For example, the rooms will be redecorated, but all the facilities will all remain the same. He'll still be there at the moment. Oh, you'll be there until the new guy starts. When you're talking to a child, will you be, will you be five in September? Now, Will is also used to make predictions about the future. For example, have you decided what you're going to do with the car? No, father thinks it will cost a lot of money to fix it. I think they'll be off in January again. Some predictions are about facts. Things that we know always happen. For example, it's all wool. It'll shrink if you watch it in hot water. Some predictions are about the present. For example, that will be Katie shouting. This means the speaker is certain he or she makes a deduction because of what they know about the situation. Now we often use also will for immediate intentions and decisions. We usually use apostrophe LL, not will after I think. For example, when I go and see Marie, I think I'll take her some flowers. What will you do with that too? Will you just put it in the fridge or will you freeze it? I think I'll have some orange juice actually. We, use, we also use will and be going for decisions. Intentions and plans. We also use will when the decision is immediate and be going to when we already have made a plan. For example, it's too expensive to fly on Friday. Look, it's clearly 200 euros. It's only 25 euros to fly on Thursday. We'll fly on Thursday then. Great, that will save us a lot of money. We're going to drive to Birmingham on Friday and Saturday morning, we're going to drive to Edinburgh. Next, will is often used to express someone's willingness to do something or to make offers. It is often used with I in this context. For example, I'll show you where to go. It's just a leaflet that I've got. Just the leaflet, right. I'll go and get your brochure too. I'll give you a lift to the hotel. Now, we also often use well to make promises. For example, I'll be there for you, don't worry. We'll always love you. Also, we often use will to make re requests or invitations. For example, will you pass me the salt? This tastes good. Will you give me the recipe? Will you come to dinner on Saturday? Now, we also sometimes give commands or orders using will. For example, will you be quiet, please? Will you stop picking your nails? It is also used to insist that someone does something. For example, but you will have to do it. You'll have no choice. Now, will is also used to describe something the speaker thinks is generally true. For example, do you think that they should try and make it easier for people to complain? No, because some people will always complain. 
Now, we also often use will to refer to events that happen often. Celia will start to get upset if she has to eat cabbage or meat, like chicken breast. My mom will say, just try it, and she'll start shaking her head and going, no, I don't want to. Mom will put it near her mouth and she'll start to cough. Will is also used to talk about repeated behavior, which the speaker does not like or approve of. Will is normally stressed here. He will leave his clothes all over the floor. It drives me mad. Now let's use the verb model will in present, past, and future tense. The marketing director will be replaced by someone from the New York office. That is, the, that is our example for the present tense of will. So a negative counterpart would be, the marketing director will not be replaced by someone new from the New York office. Now let's use will in past tense. The marketing director will have been replaced by someone new from the New York office. Now its negative counterpart would be, the marketing director wouldn't have been replaced by someone new from New York office. Now let's use will in future tense. The marketing director will be leaving the office in a few months. Now its negative counterpart would be, the marketing director will not be leaving the office in a few months. Now let's move on to the next model verb, which is must. Must is a model verb most commonly used to express certainty. It can be used to express necessity or strong recommendation. Although native speakers prefer the more flexible form have to, must not, must not can be used to private actions, but this sounds very severe. Speakers prefer to use a softer model verbs such as should not or ought not to dissuade rather than prohibit. Now, for example, this must be the right address. Students must pass an entrance examination to study at this school. You must take some medicine for that cough. Now let's look at the forms of the model verb must. First is its affirmative form. Must comes first in the must, must comes first in the verb phrase after the subject and before another verb. For example, she must have a lot of friends. Also remember that must can be used with another model verb. For example, we don't say this must can be your sister or this can must be your sister. Instead, we say, this must be your sister. Now, the negative form of must is mustn't. We don't use don't, doesn't, didn't with must. For example, we don't say, there doesn't must be any rubbish left. Um, instead, we say, there mustn't be any rubbish left. Uh, we can use the full form must not in formal context or when we want to emphasize something. For example, you must not leave any rubbish. Let's go to the question form. Just a little warning, the subject and must change position to, change, to form questions. We don't use do, does, or did. For example, we don't say, do you must make that noise? Um, instead we say, must you make that noise? Now let's go to the uses of must. When we think carefully about facts, we often use must to express deductions and conclusions from these. For example, he's so small. He must be no more than four years old. Now, in the sentence, he's so small is the fact. And the, and the next sentence, which is, he must be no more than four years old, is the deduction or conclusion. Another example is, when two teachers are talking about a student, he falls asleep in class every morning, which is a fact. He must be out late every night, or maybe he works at a night where maybe he works at a night job, which is the deduction or conclusion. But warning, we can we use can't or cannot as the negative form of must to deny something or make negative deductions or conclusions. For example, it just can't be true. He can't have left his job. That cannot be his sister. She looks so different. We also use must to express strong obligation and necessity. For example, I must talk to you about the new project. Seat belts must be worn in the, in the back of the car. There must be a minimum of two members of the company at the meeting. Now warning, we use had to 
had to, not, must do, to express obligation and necessity in the past. For example, we don't say, it was dark and we must cycle home in the dark. For example, by the time we got back to our bikes, it was dark and we had to cycle home in the dark without any lights. Another example is, we don't say, last year, teachers must make a repeat. Instead, we say, last year, teachers had to make a report on each child every week. We also use must, must not to talk about what is not permitted. For example, you must not park outside the entrance. You must not make noise after nine o'clock. Must and must not often occur in public science and notices indicating laws, rules and prohibitions. For example, all passengers must present valid photo identification at the check-in of all flights. Another example is, Tickets must be re retained by inspection and must be produced at for inspection on request by any authorized official of bus ARAN. We also use must to express polite invitations or encouragement. For example, you must come and see you soon. You must try some of this chocolate cake, it's delicious. You must go and see that film. Also, we also use the question form of must in criticism. For example, must you keep playing that terrible music? Why must you mispronounce my name every time? Now let's use now let's use must in the three tenses. First, let's use must in the present form. You must take some time off and get some rest. Now its negative counterpart is that you mustn't drink so much. It's not good for your health. Now when you're now, when you're using must in past tense, then it should be it should be in a way that it shifted to should. For example, you should have taken some time off this week and get some rest. Now, its negative counterpart would be you shouldn't have drunk so much that caused the accident. Now, when you're talking about when you're applying must in a future tense, it should also shift to should. For example, you should take some time off next week to get some rest. Its negative counterpart would be, you shouldn't drink at the party. You are going to be the designated driver. Now, let's move on to the next model verb, which is might. Might is a model verb most commonly used to express possibility. It is also often used in conditional sentences. English speakers also use might to make suggestions or requests although this is less common in American English. For example, you, your purse might be in the living room. If I didn't have to work, I might go with you. You might visit the botanical gardens during your visit. Now let's look at the forms of might. First is the affirmative form. Might comes first in the verb phrase after the subject and before another verb. For example, she might sell her house. Now, we don't say that might can be true or that can might be true. Instead, she might sell her, it said this might be true. Now, the negative form of might is might not or, by, or mightn't. We don't use don't, doesn't, or didn't with might. For example, we don't say there doesn't might be anyone in the house. Instead, we say there might not be anyone in the house or there mightn't be. Now, when it comes to the question form, the subject and might change positions to form questions. For example, but warning, we don't use do, does, or did. For example, we don't say, does this might be the key? Instead, we say, might this be the key? We also, another example is, we don't say, does it, does it might this be the key? Instead, we say, mightn't this be the key? Now, let's now let's move on to the uses of might. We often use might most often to refer to a weak possibility. For example, I might go to Japan for a month to study Japanese. The dog might bark when we pass by the gate. They might not like very hot food. Also, we, might, we refer to might for permission. It is very formal, but it's not very used very often. For example, might I ask your name? May I interrupt you for a moment? 
Also, we can use might to give advice or make a suggestion sound more polite or less direct, especially when used together with like, prefer, or want. For example, you might like to try one of these wonderful desserts. Also, we often use might have plus the ED form to express the disapproval or criticism. For example, you might have told me you were coming home for dinner. You might have tidied your room. Now let's use might in the three tenses. First, let's use might in the present tense. Example, she might be on the bus. I think her car is having problems. Now, its negative counterpart would be, she might not be on the bus, she might be walking home. For example, um, next is, let's use might in past form. She might have taken the bus. I'm not sure how she got to work. Its negative counterpart would be, she might not even have taken the bus. She might have walked home. Now let's use might for the future tense. She might, she might take the bus home. I don't think Bill will be able to give her a ride. Now its negative counterpart would be, she might not take the bus. She might get a ride from Bill. Now, may is a model verb most commonly used to express possibility. It can also be used to give or request permission, although this usage is becoming less common. Examples of usage of may are, Cheryl may be at home or perhaps at work. Johnny, you may, have, you may leave the table when you finish your dinner. May I use the bathroom? Now let's look at the forms of may. Look, first is the affirmative form of may. May comes first in the verb phrase after the subject and before another verb. For example, it might be possible for him to get home tonight. Remember that may can be used with another modal verb. For example, we don't say this may could hurt you or this could may hurt you. Instead, this may hurt you. Now the negative form of may is may not. We don't use don't, doesn't, and didn't with may. For example, we don't say we don't may have enough information at the moment. Instead, we say, we may not have enough information at the moment. Now, the, now, when it comes to the question form, here's the warning. The subject and may change positions to form question. We don't use do, does, and did. For example, we don't say, do we may drop you at your hotel? Instead, we say, may we drop you at your hotel? Also, another example is we don't say, do may I leave the room, please? Um, we say, instead we say, may I leave the room, please? Now let's, now let's discuss the uses of the modal verb may. We, may. we use may to ask for, give, and refuse permission. It is quite formal. For example, here are the uses of may when asking for permission. May I leave the room? Um, may we use your phone? Now here's how it looks when use, when may is used to give permission. Yes, you may. And here's what it looks like when it's used to refuse permission. No, you may not. Now we also use may to refer to weak possibility in the present and future. For example, the economy may go, may go up or down in the next year. I think I may go to the doctor today and try to get some antibiotics. Now we also use may in formal writing, especially academic English to describe things which the speaker thinks are generally true or possible. In this case, it is the most, it is a more formal equivalent of can. We also often use may to accept a different view or opinion, especially with well and or followed by but. For example, one month may well be too long to go away on holiday. I may be wrong, but I am going to tell the police about it. The couch may well cost more, but it's going to be different. Now let's use may in the three tenses. First, let's use may in the present tense. Jack may be upset. I can't really tell if he's annoyed or tired. Now its negative counterpart would be, Jack may not be upset. Perhaps he is tired. Now let's use 
Now let's use may in the past form. Jack may have been upset. I couldn't really tell if he was annoyed or tired. Now his negative counterpart would be, Jack may not have been upset. Perhaps he was tired. Now let's use may in the future tense. Jack may get upset if you don't tell him the truth. Now his negative counterpart would be, Jack may, uh, may not get upset even if you tell him the truth. Now let's go to the last modal verb, which is wish. Wish is used to show what they will show that they want a situation to be different. The verb after wish is one tense back, so that if you are wishing for a different person's situation, the tense that follows wish is past simple or past continuous. First, let's talk about wish plus to infinitive. When we use wish followed by a verb to in the two infinitive form, wish means the same as want, but it is more formal. We do not normally use wish in the continuous form when we use it with a to infinitive. For example, we don't say, I'm wishing to speak to. Instead, we say, I wish to speak to Mr. Hennessy, please. Also, we don't use a that clause after wish when it is a more formal version of want. For example, we don't say, I wish that I visit you in the summer. Instead, we say, I wish to visit you in the summer, if possible. Also, we can use an object before the to infinitive. For example, I didn't wish my family to know about Sarah, so I told them nothing. When we use an object after wish, we must also use a verb to infinitive form. Alternatively, we can say want or would like, for example, we wish to have a table in the window, please. We would like a table near me, please. Now, the next, now let's go to the next use of wish, which is wish plus indirect object plus direct object. We use wish with two objects, an, under, an indirect object plus a direct object object for expressions of good wishes and hopes that good things will happen to people. For example, I wish you success in your new job. Now, you is the indirect object and success is the direct object. Another example is, I've got my driving test tomorrow, wish me luck. Now, me, ref, me in the sentence is the indirect object and luck is the direct object. Another example is, we wish you a long and happy life together. Now you in the sentence is the indirect object and a long and happy life is the direct object. Now let's go to the next use of wish, which is wish plus that clause. We use wish with a that clause when we regret or feel sorry for things not be, that being not different. We imagine a different past or present. For example, I just wish that everything could be as it used to be. In informal situations, we usually omit that. I wish I had his phone number. We could tell him about the good news. Now let's, you, now, let's move on to the next use of wish, which is wish plus verb forms in the that cause. For example, the verb forms we used in the that clauses after wish are similar to the verb forms in conditional clauses after if. We use a past verb form for present and future meanings. Now let's compare if and wish when used in the sentence. First, it would be good if we have a bigger car. But also, if we, if we apply wish instead of if in that sentence, I wish we had a bigger car. Now, when we use something about the past, we use the Past perfect after wish. For example, I wish I had known Charlie was coming. I wouldn't invite you, Jane. When we wish something about the past, we use the past perfect after wish. For example, I wish I had known Car Charlie was coming. I wouldn't invite Jane. I wish I hadn't said that. I can see I've upset you, sorry. Now the next use of wish is wish plus wood. We can use wish plus would if we are annoyed about something that is or is not happening or about something that will or will not happen. For example, I wish you'd stop making so much noise. You are making a noise. It would be better if you didn't. 
Another example is, I wish you wouldn't come through the kitchen with your dirty boots on. In informal situations, we can use wish in the continuous form like this. He's embarrassing everyone. I'm just wishing he would go away. Now let's use wish in present, past, and future tense. First, let's use wish in, in the present tense. I wish dad comes home tonight. Now it's negative counterpart with me. I don't wish for dad to come home tonight. Now let's use wish in the past form. I hope dad would have come home during the summer. Now it's negative counterpart with me. I didn't hope for dad to come home during the summer. And lastly, let's use wish in future tense. I wish dad wouldn't leave us anymore. Now it's negative counterpart would be, I don't wish for dad to stay with us anymore. Now, I hope you've learned something about, about modal verbs and their usages in this tutorial. If you liked it, kindly send me a direct message. And if those little things really mean something, thank you for listening. And I hope you again learned something.